All right, next topic I'm going to cover is how to handle reconciliation discrepancies, a very common year-end topic. Reconciliation discrepancies uh, work the following. First, let me uh, frame this by going to do a reconcile and just kind of show you the starting point, okay? So this is a, let's assume for a second that this is the actual real ending balance of the bank statement, 47,488.42. If, you, if you're following along, uh, write this number down. Uh, that way, when you kind of see what I'm about to do, you're going to see how that number moves around. So write that number down if you can. Uh, and I'm going to show you there are three ways you can screw up a reconciliation. There's three ways you can mess up that beginning balance. One way is by deleting a transaction that's already been reconciled. So I'm going to do the example of deleting a transaction that's already been reconciled. So I'm going to pull up a check here. I'll just pull up this check. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this $54 check, and I'm just going to delete it. Okay, now I'm not saying this is something you should do. I'm saying this is something clients do. And then we have to clean them up, right? Sometimes we clean them up monthly. Sometimes we clean them up annually. I just kind of want to show you how this works. So I'm going to delete a check of a transaction that's been reconciled. Now, your client or whoever's doing this gets an, an error message warning you saying, Maybe you shouldn't do this, but I'm going to hit OK anyway because that's, that's how pretty much how it works. Clients ignore these things. Okay, so that's one, one way you can mess up a reconciliation, which is deleting a reconciled transaction. The other way is by changing the amount of a reconciled transaction. So I'm going to change the amount of this check from 120. I'm going to change it to $12, right? For whatever reason, somebody reconciled the bank and then went out there and then changed the amounts, right? These, this, this can also happen, right? I'm sure a lot of you guys can uh, can relate to this. Okay, so I'm going to change the amount of the of the check that's already been cleared. I'm going to hit save and close. Okay, I will hit. It gives you a warning saying you shouldn't do this, but you know how it is. Clients don't care about warnings; they just hit yes anyway. And the other way you can mess up a reconciliation is by and this happens usually much more sort of a mistake by miskeying is by grabbing a check that's already been uh, reconciled and going into the register and manually unclearing it. So that means going out of your way to go in the register, clicking in that little box where the check mark is, ignoring this check message, right? Completely on, basically you're unreconciling it, you're unclearing it, and then saving it. Also ignoring the fact that it tells you it's not a good idea and hit yes. But if, if you guys uh, done stuff like you know, uh, like cleaning up QuickBooks files after your clients, you know, or we don't know exactly how it happened, but we know it did happen, and it, they must have ignored all these error messages. So what happens is, um, after the client does this, there's no way for you to know that there's an error, right? But when you go reconcile, so I'm going to go reconcile my next month, my beginning balance is no longer the same beginning balance that it's supposed to be. If I click on this what if my beginning balance doesn't match, it takes you to the help menu that kind of covers a couple of these things. But the key thing here is to click down here where it says locate discrepancies. The, the other way to go into locate discrepancies is to go to reports, banking, and we go to uh, reconciliation discrepancy. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk you through fixing every one of these. Okay, so we're gonna go through the method of how to, how to, how to fix them. So I'm gonna go reconciliation discrepancy report, I'm going to hit OK, and then it's going to list the, list the exact three transactions that are causing that balance to be different, okay? If you wrote, you see this $285 with 23 cents? If you wrote down uh, the number that we had earlier, whatever number we had here, 48,000 something, if I add the 285.23 to that 47,000, I'm going to get to the correct amount. So this is actually, this report is explaining to me specifically how and which transactions messed up my reconciliations, right? So to fix these, it's actually uh, kind of a, a simple concept, right? So the first one is uh, the amount that was changed, right? So one of the nice things is from this report, I can double click on this transaction so we can actually see the reconciled amount was $120 and the difference is 108. So this $120 is exactly what I'm gonna fix. So I'm gonna double click on 120. And uh, I'm going to change it now to 120, right? So by doing that, I'm basically reversing what I did originally. That's how you would fix uh, that particular transaction. So I'm going to hit save and close. 
and hit yes. Okay? And the minute I fix it, it comes out of my reconciliation discrepancy report. Okay? The second one says transaction was manually uncleared, right? It just says unclear. So when I click on it, this I love this. When I double click on this transaction, it takes me straight into the register and all I have to do at this point is manually clear it. So I'm just basically reversing the exact same thing that I had done. So I'm undoing what the client did or maybe what one of your staff members did or maybe you did it for who cares who did it. This is just this is how to fix it. Okay? And then we're gonna hit record and hit yes. So that fixes that one and it goes away from the report. Okay. The last one is the, the trickiest one. Okay, this is the, the, the trickiest one, which is um, a deleted transaction. So if I double click on this, it doesn't work. The reason why is because in QuickBooks, once you delete a transaction, you, you it only stays in your audit trail, but it no longer stays in um in it's no longer in a way that I can undo it or, or bring it back from the day from the dead. <laughs> so I can't resuscitate a deleted transaction. So what I would have to do is I would have to recreate this transaction. Now assuming this transaction has a lot of uh, multiple uh, items or multiple fields or memo and recreating it requires you to go deeper. What you want to use is a different reporting combination. You want to go to report, you want to go to accounting and taxes, and then you want to go to avoided and deleted transactions detail. Okay? So this report, and I'm just gonna let me just show this with two reports uh, next to each other here. I'm gonna show them here tile vertically. So the detail report shows me everything that was deleted, and I can actually see um, what accounts were used. So I can see which bank account it was used from, which is the split. If there's multiple splits, I'm gonna be able to see them in there. The check numbers. So what the avoided deleted transactions detail report gives you is a little bit more information, more detailed information when it comes time to recreating it. So to recreate this transaction is simple. I just write a new check. So I'm going to go to Control W here to write a new check. Then what's my vendor's name is Postmaster. So I'm going to put here Postmaster. The check number is 5284. The original date in this one was 11-22-2016-2019 actually. And the amount is 54, post is on delivery. And then I hit save and close. So by doing that, I'm fixing it. But now keep keep in mind something that's very interesting. When I fixed my first two, when I fixed my first two, they went away. But when I fixed this last one that was deleted, it didn't go away. The reason for that is because there's no way for QuickBooks to know uh, that the new transaction is somehow related to the old transaction. So this will not, this will not update by itself like this. It will, there's actually, this will never go away from the reconciliation discrepancy report. Now, to fix my balance, I'm gonna go to banking, reconcile. I'm gonna roll back the date as if I'm re-reconciling the old amount. So I have to roll back the date as if I'm re-reconciling the old amount. I actually didn't write down the amount uh, anybody in the chat care to send it to me? Anybody that wrote it down, just care to send it to me so I can re-put it in there. I'm gonna put zero for now, wait for somebody in the chat to send me the amount. Okay, there it is, thank you, I got it, I got it. <laughs> okay, uh, four, seven, four, eight, eight, point nine, point, uh, wait, eight point four two, so four two, yes, okay. Thank you very much for writing it down. Right, that, that, I'm very appreciative that you guys are actually listening. So the, the key thing is I'm going to re-put the old reconciled amount. I'm going to go back to the date of the last time that it was reconciled correctly. So I'm basically re-reconciling it. I'm going to hit continue, and you're going to see something curious, okay? The transaction that, uh, the tra whoops, no, I think switched. So the transaction that, I ha that was deleted, that was recreated, uh, brought back from the dead uh, per se, uh, it's going to show back in there because it hasn't been cleared yet. So I have to actually check it. And then I hit, you're gonna go down and see that the difference is zero. And now I can hit uh, reconcile now. And then when I hit reconcile now, now I'm, in, I'm back in business, okay? Uh, I'm gonna go back into the reconciliation discrepancy report and show you one very peculiar, specific thing about this that I don't like, that I dislike. One of the tricky things about this is if you delete a transaction, if you delete it, and fix it through the system, the, this report actually 
uh, doesn't know that you fixed it. And this reconciliation discrepancy report always shows in here. This is why I specifically recommend, I specifically recommend that instead of deleting stuff, get used to voiding stuff. Because I want to show you voiding is a lot different than deleting, especially on this sort of situation. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go to a check again. And instead of deleting it, I want to show you what the different impact that this would have had if instead of deleting it, it would have been voided. Because if, if it had been voided, this would be a lot easier to fix. So let's grab this transaction that's in here, a payroll service fee or whatever. And instead of deleting it, I'm going to avoid it. Now, it's still going to give me the same the reconciliation discrepancy problem. It is going to happen. So I'm going to hit save and close. It gives me the warning. It's not a good idea. OK, whatever. I'm going to hit yes. And uh, I'll hit uh, just for the check here. So what happens is when I try to reconcile, I'm going to have the same issue as before. I'm not going to have my correct beginning balance. However, when I go into my reconciliation discrepancy report, just to show you, um, this one doesn't say deleted. It doesn't say voided. Because in QuickBooks, a voided transaction is just a regular transaction changed to zero with a memo that says void. So there's no, the void flag is not something that you could actually uh, filter in a report uh, really well. But basically, the, um, it says amount. But what's nice about this one is, because it wasn't deleted, because it was voided, I can just double click on it. And I'll delete here the void memo. So you don't have to. You can just do it without it. But And then I just change the amount to 123. I'll hit save and close. Hit yes. Oops, it was 123 and 8 cents. So 123 and 8 cents. Hit save and close. And now it goes away from my report. So that is the, the specifically best advantage of, uh, of using avoid instead of delete in this particular uh, situation. All right, so that's it for the reconcil reconciliation discrepancy report.